Oh my god. Fiona and Cake just dropped its first two episodes, and this continuation of Adventure Time lore is already one of my favorite matured animated spin-offs of all time. Sorry Rugrats all grown up, you tried. Fiona and Cake is a masterclass at growing its story along with its audience, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't identify with Simon and Fiona so hard after seeing these apps. So today, I'm breaking down all the easter eggs, details, and moments of existential multiversal pain you might have missed in episode 1, Fiona Campbell. This is your spoiler warning! If you haven't seen the pilot episode of Fiona and Cake yet, hit pause on this video and come back when you've put the rat bus on ice. Now on to the breakdown. The episode title itself, Fiona Campbell, is our very first nod to our hero's male counterpart, Finn Mertens. While Finn took his father, Martin Mertens' last name in OG Adventure Time, the creators gave Fiona Finn's mother, Minerva Campbell's maiden name as her last name. The episode opens in Fiona's dream, in which she's chasing down an evil rap bus in order to save the gaggle of tiny commuters trapped inside. Adam Muto actually posted the concept art for the rap bus on Twitter the other day, drawn by artist Jenny Yu. The rap bus is a nod to the cat bus from My Neighbor Totoro, and the outfit Fiona wears is clearly inspired by Sailor Moon. Fun fact! In Fiona's debut episode in the original series, she wears a dress similar to Sailor Moon's Princess Serenity while on her date with fake Prince Gumball. The handsome Ice Prince that helps Fiona save the day is her dreamscape's Ice King variant, complete with a giant ice penguin that resembles Gunter and the others. The Ice Prince does, however, still have Ice K's Wishing Crown's gem incorporated into his outfit. His whole vibe is a play on Tuxedo Mask, Sailor Moon's mysterious love interest. He's also voiced by Robbie Damon, the modern dub voice for the character. After ICP hooks Fiona up with some skates, she shouts Hans Brinker action go! This is a reference to children's novel Hans Brinker or The Silver Skates, a story of a life in Holland. Written by Mary Mapes Dodge in 1865, this book actually introduced the sport of Dutch speed skating to America. But that wasn't its only contribution to popular culture. That's right, Andy Brink Brinker from the Disney Channel original movie Brink was inspired by the centuries-old tale of Hans Brinker. Cake encourages Fiona to buck him up, girl. Our very first dirty joke of the new series. Adventure Time got away with using fake curse words, but Fiona and Cake has taken that to a whole new level. We even see Fiona give the backwards V in this app after Queenie fires her, a hand gesture equivalent to the FU finger in the UK and other European countries. When Fiona's alarm clock goes off in the real world, the noise seeps into her dreams. It turns out that not only does her alarm clock share BMO's design, it's also voiced by Nikki Yang. Apparently that's the only accessory I'm personally missing, because otherwise our apartments look pretty much the same. Oh yeah, baby, that's the apartment of a broke 30-year-old. Dirty dishes amok, video game controllers on every surface, and posters on every square inch of wall. You don't have to judge me, I'm doing it to myself. Interestingly, she also has a framed photo of what looks like Kingman hanging up in her kitchen. Although, when we get a closer look, this guy's hat is a lot shorter. But you gotta admit, their skin tone and head shape and penchant for headwear are pretty dang similar. None of the other items in Fiona's apartment seem to be callbacks, but some notable background elements include a Swamp Champ 2 poster, a Lost Sword poster, a bowling poster for Alien Game, this art for a dude in the classic Finn slash Conan pose, a poster for something called BVC Game, a movie poster for Toyed Force, and the Nutrition Pyramid Upside Down, a pretty apt metaphor for Fiona's state of being. We also learn that Fiona's television set is stuck playing Cheers on every channel, a nod to the Ice King's favorite sitcom from the original series and his current comfort show, as seen in episode 2. Speaking of sitcoms, Fiona Campbell's episode title card is stylized to look like the Seinfeld logo. Sitcoms appear to represent a core theme that this miniseries is addressing, the repetitive drag of comfort versus the adventurous yet dangerous uncertainty of change. Sitcoms, especially the early 90s era of episodic sitcoms like Cheers and Seinfeld, are structurally built to always challenge characters with the illusion of change, but by the end of their episodes, the characters and their worlds return to a status quo. This return to the status quo is what makes them so comforting to watch. But in reality, this status quo treadmill can make a person feel rural aimless and sap them of purpose. In the two FNC episodes we have so far, this is the case for both of our protagonists. Fiona feels trapped on a hamster wheel of unfulfilling jobs, and Simon's life is empty without Betty, and he questions whether his life was better with the chaotic magic of being the Ice King. The show's theme song, Not Myself by Zuzu and Karan, highlights this even further. The lyrics talk about the pain of mundane living, but this problem is exacerbated by the singer's resistance to change. They don't leave their room, they try half-heartedly, and they hold setbacks as emotionally devastating ends to their dreams. 
Seeing as this series is a more emotionally complex outing than AT, I don't necessarily think that the solution to these issues are as simple as embracing change fearlessly. But based on Not Myself's lyrical content, dealing with the uncomfortable emotions that come with the breaking of the status quo is how Simon and Fiona can overcome the Inui that the same status quo creates. But the intro isn't just sad, there's some fun things in it too. For instance, the two ducks that steal money from Marshall Lee's guitar case are this universe's version of the two-headed duck from the OG intro. Also, peep Fiona's tambourine in this shot. In the episode Daddy's Little Monster, Finn plays the tambourine while Marceline plays banjo. Marshall himself has a tattoo or a mole where Marcy's vampire bite is located. At one point, Cake plays with a candy corn mouse. This is likely a reference to Bubblegum's candy corn lab rat science. We also find out that Fiona temporarily dated DJ Flame, just like how Finn briefly dated Flame Princess for a few episodes of AT. When Fiona leaves her house, you can see she's dealing with this breakup by giving away DJ Flame's stuff. Flame being a DJ tracks with Flame Princess being one of the best rappers in OO. In Gary's scene in this sequence, he's working on a birthday cake for Fiona. Topping the cake is a character with a cone hat. This might be an homage to Princess Bubblegum's greatest creations, the Gumball Guardians who oversee her kingdom and also wear cone hats. When Fiona is dyeing Gary's hair pink, you can spot a framed picture of an island. Islands are an important part of Finn's story, as Finn was born on an island and had a whole arc exploring an archipelago to uncover his origins. Above Fiona's apartment, one of her neighbors has a frog chilling by the window, possibly a reference to Adventure Time's frog season shorts. There's a bunch of cool little background details as Fiona runs down the street. Firstly, we get an idea of the types of jobs Fiona's been blowing through. Waitress, maid, construction worker, postal woman, lifeguard, and fast food server. While running, she passes a ghost cafe, a pizza shop, a bike store, the lazy pet shop, another cafe, serious books where you can get some heavy reading done, and a 24-hour laundromat. There are no overt AT references here, but I am interested in knowing if this graffiti that spells out R-E-M is related to the show's emphasis on dreams. There are also several instances of the word cool showing up, which might be subliminal messaging related to the Ice King. I know I just theorized that Fiona and Cake are real flesh and blood variants straight from the multiverse, but it seems like we're getting a few clues like these that might suggest they are the Ice King's subconscious struggling with becoming normified. Keep in mind, the lines between dreams and alternate realities are pretty blurry in AT lore, so it's possible that Fiona and Cake are somehow both the Ice King's imagination and real people from the multiverse. Back in Fiona's apartment, it turns out that Cake has also been having some weird dreams with some even weirder side effects. She wakes up feeling cold to the touch and begins seeing sparkling blue portals and ice-related mechanisms. Like Marceline begs Ice King in the episode I Remember You, Fiona tells Cake, Stop, Stop acting crazy! when she refuses to eat anything besides ice cubes. And this is where I started yelling, Oh my god, take your cat to the actual vet at my TV screen. If Pugsley ever turned down a sandwich, I would rush him to the emergency room. Seriously, the show is teasing that Cake is sick in a few scenes, so I'm worried about how badly the writers are gonna hurt our little hearts. As we change scenes to Fiona's day job, Peep the Magic Man-esque hat perched atop the hotel sign. The last time we saw this hat, Betty was wearing it to try and harness Gulp's powers and come along with me. I don't think it's a coincidence that the other sign we see here reads sleep, as most of these first two episodes have a lot to do with waking life versus dreaming. Even when Fiona welcomes her patrons to Queenie's bus tour, their slogan is, Where bus dreams come true. It turns out that Queenie runs several businesses in this universe. Not only does she own the bus tour company, she also has an accounting firm and a boat rental company. Marshall's mom, Mrs. Abadir, also has an advertisement for a vacuum sales business. Although, we find out later in the episode that her main gig is being Fiona's landlord. I love that they made this world's version of Marcy's dad, aka the king of the nightosphere, a soul-sucking landlord. They really are all evil! Like Marcy, Marshall isn't on speaking terms with his mom right now. And something tells me it's because she ate his onion rings. That cool detail is a double easter egg, however. In the original series, it turned out that Marceline owned Finn and Jake's treehouse, in the same way that Mrs. Abadir owns Fiona and Cake's apartment in this world. Now we've obviously got a lot of normified and gender-swapped Adventure Time characters in this episode, starting with these Ash and Wildberry Princess lookalikes standing on the street corner. On board the bus, We've got Abraka Danielle, Queenie, Starchy, Marshall Lee, a banana guard who later joins up with the rest of his bunch, Hot Dog Prince, and a female fern. You gotta check out Marshall Lee's guitar case in this scene. 
It's chock full of punk band spoofs, like Las Crudas, which means The Hangovers in Spanish. The Hangovers were a late 90s alt-rock band from the UK. X-Ray Pex pays homage to the London punk band from 1976 called X-Ray Specs, and Dark Eyes is a spoof of the early aughts post-punk band Black Eyes. Daikini Kill is a take on the 90s grunge band Bikini Kill, and mixes it with the Daikini type of feminine spirit in Hinduism and Buddhism that represents liberation. The interior of Marshall's case has a death sticker, which may be referenced that death briefly played in Marcy's band in the original series. But it's not all punk rock and gender-swapped fun. We also catch some glimpses of important lore in this universe, like the fact that Betty has a significant history to Fiona's hometown. In addition to seeing a photo of Betty on the front of Queenie's newspaper, there's also a gigantic statue of her in their city park. Fiona mentions that the statue underwent renovation 12 years ago, which seems to line up with the same time gap in Ooh from the events of Come Along With Me and the next episode of Fiona and Kate. Most interestingly, however, is that the statue is surrounded by frogs. In season 10's Temple of Mars, Betty, Finn, and Jermaine are tricked into entering a telemetry capsule that calibrates to the minds of those who enter it. The first trial they face is a sea of frogs that become angry when you look at them. One of the frogs looks like Fern, representing Finn's unresolved conflict with him. After Betty's trial, we watch a memory of younger Betty excitedly planning her trip to study in the Australian Outback. Because she met Simon the next day, she never left for her trip, but in this machine, she's able to use her magic to change her younger self's plane tickets so that their paths never cross. And this might be a wacky theory, but I don't think that those frogs paired with that statue are a coincidence. What if this is the universe, or at the very least an approximation of a universe, where Betty never met Simon and chose to focus on her own passions instead of dedicating her life to him? This also seems to support the theory that this is a corner of normal Simon's mind, and Betty has been frozen like this statue since she fused with Gull. Outside the aquarium, Fiona sees a penguin statue that looks like Gunter, reminding her of her dream the previous night. Dream talk leads Normie Banana Guard to admit he's had dreams about ice cream and being a banana. Normie Hot Dog Prince claims he's dreamt about being a hot dog, and Fern says that her dreams are too messed up to even talk about. Alluding to the nightmares Fern endured while under the influence of the grass demon and the bumped up relationship he had with Finn. Queenie removes her disguise and reveals that she's undercover bossing Fiona, similar to the way that Queenie revealed that she wasn't actually an ancient mummy in the episode Fiona and Cake and Fiona. Queenie kicks everyone off the bus, and Marshall says, smooth driving Van Dam" to the bus driver. This is a fun little golf pun that references golfer Ann Van Damme's driving skills. After getting fired and given the V to Queenie's bus, Fiona and Cake walk to grab coffee at their pal Gary's day job, Butler's Buttery Buns. On their walk, they pass by a game shop that has a sword on display that looks similar to Fiona's sword. There are also games that evoke several of the fantastical elements of Ooh, like skeletons, lemons, and even oozers. The next door's window display features sleeping versions of the party bears, and a guy who looks just like Lemon Hope is passing out his mixtape outside. Next to him is a lady selling tea. This could be a twist on Potable Wizard, who's a coffee shop owner made of coffee. We get to see the Ooh variant of the dude with the Fushigi balls in Simon's episode, only he's juggling with devil sticks in that universe. The logo for the tea house that Fiona passes is a reference to one of my all-time fave characters, Tree Trunks. The apple in the center is a nod to Tree Trunks' first episode appearance when she quested Finn to help her get a crystal gem apple. When F and C arrive at Butler's Buttery Buns, her pal Gary Prince, this world's Prince Gumball, is making lattes for this universe's female cinnamon buns variant. The swan latte art he makes for her looks a lot like Princess Bubblegum's giant swan. It also turns out that the sweet shop is owned by Beatrice Butler, Butterscotch Butler's counterpart. Also happens to be Peppermint Butler's Scottish counterpart in the fantastical Fiona and Cake universe. When Fiona asks Gary how long he's known her, Gary says, I don't know, I guess like forever. A reference to the fact that Finn's reincarnations and Princess Bubblegum always find each other throughout time. I low-key love how they nailed Bubblegum's analytic creation of candy people with Gary's painstaking experimentation with his own sweets. After checking in with Marshall, Fiona heads to the city gardens to find Marshall's buddy Ellis, who claims he'll be able to fix whatever's wrong with cake. Several bumblebees that resemble Breezy and the end credits bees swarm around the statue of Betty and her frogs. 
Fiona's directions take her deep into the brambles and underbrush of the park's unkempt wilderness. There, she finds Hunter, a variant of Huntress Wizard played by non-binary voice artist Vico Ortiz. Hunter tells Fiona that every flower could be considered a weed. Remember this scene as we move into the series, because based on the trailer of Fiona being hunted by this red knight, it's likely she'll be considered an unwanted weed when she enters universes she's not supposed to visit. Hunter leads Fiona to LSP. LSP lives in the park, but dreams of being a beautiful prince like his Fiona and Kate counterpart Lumpy Space Prince, and his main canning counterpart Lumpy Space Princess. Our girl LSP has been known to live outdoors when she visits Ooh, choosing to camp in the forest at night. While Fiona is chasing Cake, who's high as balls on catnip and hell-bent on diving into the ice cream cart portal, we get a couple more Normie cameos. Two Normie versions of the Lemon Grab clones are fighting over their lemon-shaped dog, a play on the lemon camel. Then there's a woman passing out ice cream that looks a lot like the Ice Queen from Fiona and Cake's debut episode of Adventure Time. Cake then jumps into the ice cream cart, and in a magical flash, transports her out of Simon's skull and into Ooh. Now, whether Fiona and Cake are real or a dream is something we'll soon find out. But for now, it's clear that there's something connecting ice with multiversal travel. How? I'm still uncertain, but I likely think it connects to Simon, Betty, and the evil baby himself, Gulp. I've got a theory that explores the connection between these characters that you can check out after this video. Finally, as the credits begin to roll, we see an image of Fiona and Cake dreaming about an apartment building, the top of which looks like this world's version of Finn and Jake's treehouse. These are just some of the things I noticed in the first episode of Fiona and Cake, but I want to know if there's anything I missed in the comments. Does anybody know if the posters in Fiona's room are references, or am I just a bunk bean show? Like this video, subscribe to Whitney Vision, follow us on all of our socials, and I'll be back with a breakdown of episode 2, Simon Petrikov, next.